Hello and welcome to the final video segment for week two. And in this video segment, we're going to investigate the H-Bridge topology. As an overview, we're going to look at that H-Bridge configuration. It consists of four switches and the switches work in pairs. And then we'll look at the different operations and how we can use this switch to create uh, AC from DC or possibly uh, change the direction of, the, of a motor if that motor is the load. So here's the basic configuration of the H-Bridge. One of the things you'll notice is uh, we have I, have, I have the switches color coded. So a S1 and S4 will work as a pair. And then S2 and S3 will also work as a pair. I'm gonna place the load in here and you'll see where the load goes. The load goes right between the bridge. And one of the key aspects as we start looking at how we're going to control the H bridge to apply voltage across this load is we have to be very careful to not switch S1 on as well as switch S2 on simultaneously. As you see, when we do that, we have basically short circuited our DC power supply which would require a lot of current and typically more often than not would d damage these devices. So let's just look at the switch with S1 closed and S4 closed. And from here you can see our voltage is applied directly across the load with the polarity plus to minus from left to right. And, and we can drive that load, uh, assuming that it, uh, the DC supply, it's a little bit choppy looking. We could also PWM either S1 or, or S4 to adjust the voltage across the load. For example, let's assume that VDC is equal to 100 volts. If S1 was PWM'd at a duty cycle of say, D equal to 50%, our effective average voltage across the load would be approximately 50 volts. We could also PWM S4. And in practice, we alternate between S1 and S4, or we look at heating loads to minimize the switching losses. We can reverse the polarity across the load by closing S3 and S2, and now we have the polarity plus to minus from right to left on this drawing of our DC supply. And again, we can apply the same PWM principle with S3 and S2 to adjust the average voltage across the load. Let me, and let me just pull up then what this looks like with a pair of MOSFETs in here. And I want to talk about one thing uh, more specifically, and we're going to go into more detail on that. And that's, that's high side switching. If for example, Q1 and Q4 were turned on effectively closing them as switches, I'm going to short Q4 here. So it looks like it's turned on we see that this voltage on the load is at almost VDC with respect to our reference. But we also know that we need a gate to source voltage that must be positive. Therefore, this implies that our voltage on the gate relative to our reference has to be even greater than our DC supply. And that's called high side switching. We're gonna look at that uh, in later video segments and we'll use what's called a high side gate driver that will allow us to rise that voltage on the gate to source on the high side switches to account for that. And before we close this video up, I just wanna show you, at the beginning of, of 
the, the course, I talked about how we were going to investigate or try to apply this to some, some real applications. And the application that I wanted to look at was the JBL 515 XT powered speaker. This schematic is the power amplifier section for the low frequency driver. It's a 15 inch driver. You'll notice in the middle here, we have a differential coil. And in some of your classes, you may have uh, discussed uh, what's called a common mode choke. And a common mode choke is a, an inductor that's wound around a common core with the polarity as such. And when current enters in common mode, it looks like a choke, but when current enters in differential mode, it looks like a short circuit. For the current entering in differential mode, it would come in that way and that way. And for all practical purposes, this would look like a short circuit. And we can see we have our H bridge here, and I'm just gonna directly draw our speaker load, which would look like that. And we see we have, that's our S1 switch or Q1 and our S4 is down here. Those work in a pair. And we have the uh, S3 is up here and our S2 is down here. Oh, by the way, if you look down here, we have a 2N3904. It's actually a surface mount variation of that. Uh, working as a logic control for this device as well. Uh, these, these signals are PWM'd over here and that provides uh, a, a, what's this is called a class D amplifier. And we're taking DC uh, plus VCC to minus VCC and creating an AC signal by PWM these signals appropriately. So high level application of this. Let's go over a recap on this segment. H-bridge -bridge configurations allow for the voltage polarity to be changed and possibly PWM'd across the load. Uh, and then finally, switching pairs must be tightly coordinated so we don't short the DC source. That would damage the switches uh, with, with high current surges flowing through the switches. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in uh, week three.